don't shoot your eye out, kid. Hey guys, this week we're going through the Torah Save 56 again. We'll be covering weapon health, we'll be covering 10 lessons learned, and we'll be covering the progression of revolvers and some unique features that we see in revolvers. The references for this video will be below. As always, we have our iPro on, we have a clear workspace with no weapons, and our weapons will be cleared multiple times. So we'll see you in a minute. Let's first go ahead and put our iPro on. Safety first. Not too many tools this week. Be using some dummy rounds, and of course, I love the spire. So let's go ahead and clear these weapons. You know, I like a spread. I like to uh, use props because it helps me talk through it. This is a Smith and Wesson Blackhawk in 45 Colt. Let me go ahead and clear this. Okay, and she's clear. And this uh, was loaned to me by Aunt Terry. And this one here was loaned to me by Aunt Terry. And if you stay tuned uh, next week, we will be doing a full overhaul on this weapon, including uh, some springs that we got. And I ha also got her some new grips. So stay tuned on that if you're interested. Let's clear our main weapon here, which is the Taurus 856. Dr. D, something I keep forgetting to ask about is I want to make this faster. Okay, and this is a Smith & Wesson 340. It's a super light weapon, and it shoots 357. And Mom, let us borrow this, and this is a Taurus Judge, which shoots 410 and 45 Colt. Okay, so when we're talking about the overall health of a weapon, generally we're talking about the overall health, but talking about inspecting the health of a firearm we're talking about this cycle of operations and you can learn a lot about a weapon by its cycle of operations and we're going to do some dry fire here we can learn a lot just by the trigger itself there are several stages to the trigger here okay so this little part in the trigger here this movement here is called the take up or the slack here and then after that we get into what's called the wall Okay, and that's once the sear actually starts to engage. You can see the hammer's coming back here. And throughout this, you can feel what is called creep, and that can be described as grit or even stacking or the steps within the, the cycle of operation. So you might feel the sear engage. So in a double action, it's more likely you're going to feel steps than in a single action. So throughout this part here, I'm feeling the creep while I'm in the wall. I might feel it on this one specifically. I feel it on the left-hand side of the trigger because there's a little grit. And I can also feel some stacking in it. You can actually probably see and hear some stacking in it, some stacking there. And essentially, I'm trying to get, let me assist myself so we can make this faster. We're trying to get into the break. And the break is that part where the hammer comes forward. And it hits our transfer bar in this case and ultimately hits our firing pin. So everything from that first part, which is our pre-travel here, our pre-travel is everything up until the break. So we in there, we have the slack, we have the wall, and we have the feeling of creep. Let's go ahead and get into break, and then we'll talk about some stuff after that. So there's our break. Now beyond the break here is what's called the over travel. And that's that little part here you can see where the trigger goes back. That's the over travel, which isn't a, a, a big deal unless there's a, a, a major malfunction. Now we're going to get into the last step, which is the reset. And you can feel stacking and grit on the reset as well. So in this one specifically, I, I know I've, I've dry fired this weapon a thousand times after already servicing it. And I know that there's going to be some creep on the left hand side of the trigger. 
and you'll probably see and maybe even hear some of the stacking. There's a little notch, there's one, and we're all the way reset. So in the cycle of operations, the trigger is, uh, it's not everything, but uh, it, it teaches you a lot about this weapon. So to go on to the full cycle of operations, as you guys, you old army guys will know it as the, the rifling functions. It's feeding, chambering, locking, firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, and cocking. So as we've seen in one of the earlier videos from this series, feeding and chambering is simple. Okay, so let me go ahead and we'll probably speed through this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this up here. And we don't necessarily have to do this here for the health, but one thing that the dummy rounds or the snap caps, as they call them, will help with is the headspace. So if there's a head a major headspace problem, we'll know by using the snap caps. But I'm going to go ahead and just I'm just going to cycle through in double action. OK, and there are no issues. So I, I know at least. Some of the headspace is working. So that's one of the benefits of using these snap caps. So 10 of the main things we learned throughout this course were, for me, I had issues between double and single action. I've kind of had understanding, but now I have a complete understanding and I can easily show you the difference now uh, with our clear weapons, of course. This is double action and we take this Black Hawk here. So that five times fast. And as you can see, this doesn't work. I can only fire if I pull that hammer back. Okay, and that is the single action versus double action. We are already talked about quite a bit about cycle of operations, and that's one of the main things we learned. Layout fluid and the high points, as you will see from our polishing video, we talked about all that. We showed you how to do it. We also learned about the sanding and polishing of that, uh, polishing the high points and all the tools that we use for high points. Also trigger weights. We learned how to take our trigger weights with our tool, the Lyman trigger weight gauge. And we also learned how to lower trigger weights as well. Whether we work the high points or whether we do sanding and polishing or whether we change springs. So we learned several ways to change the trigger weights. We also learned the changing of the springs. We learned about polishing springs. We also learned about bluing. And one of the most beneficial things to me has been audio visual skills and YouTube skills. Because I learned quite a bit about video and editing skills just from doing this course itself. So that has been a big learning experience for me. All right, and let's get into this last part of the assignment, part three here, which was we're going to talk about the unique features we found in our Taurus A56 here and how they've changed over time from a single action weapon here. So we had to cock this every time to fire, which is a safety aspect as well. And as you can see, all these weapons here, just a side note here. All these weapons have a transfer bar in here, and we can thank Ruger, Mr. Ruger, for that, which is an, another safety feature that was added to revolvers. For you guys that don't know, before the transfer bar, there was the risk of your hammer setting on your firing pin itself, and you might be in the saddle, and that might that action might set say your trigger off or uh that actually might set your primer off so that would be something to worry about but thanks to mr ruger we had the transfer bar so talking about the progression of revolvers we went from a single action like this one and then we eventually got into double action like this and so we know that this one is single and double action here so we know double action, and we know this weapon's clear, of course. We know that double action is all you have to do is pull the trigger to chamber and fire around, as opposed to 
single action with this weapon also has where we just have to cock that hammer back and we can pull the trigger. Okay. Some other progressions of revolvers. We have this Smith & Wesson 340 here. And as you can see, there is no hammer on this weapon. And it is only double action. So you can only fire this in double action. And some, also some of the other progressions are definitely the caliber and size of round we can fire with our revolver. We went from odd rounds like 31 and 32 caliber in the early days, in the early, early single action days. We went from cap and ball, 31 and 32 caliber. Now we progressed all the way up to revolvers that can fire 410 shotgun shells and 45 long colt and 45 ACP. So that is also one other thing that I learned throughout this course is that revolvers are going nowhere. We're gonna upgrade Aunt Terry's 340 here and that video will be out next week and it, it should be pretty fun. And we're gonna use everything we implemented from the entire FTH 202 course. All right, guys, it concludes this video where we went through weapon health, lessons learned, and revolver progression and features. So for our references this week, we use the Gun Digest Book of Revolvers Assembly and Disassembly 4th Edition. We use our SDI FTH202 Mechanics and Firearms Revolvers. We use the Gun Digest Book of Exploded Gun Drawings 4th Edition. We used our Taurus manual, and we also used the gunsmithing pistols and revolvers. In addition, we used an article from Real Gun Reviews called Trigger Definitions, Take Up, Creep, Break, Over Travel, Reset, Etc. by Ferrari Steve, and this was published on April 8, 2016. As always, if you have any questions, leave them below, and stay frosty.